Now let's cross live to Washington, where I'm joined by Amber Corrin. She's the chief editor of Federal Times, who's been following this story from the very beginning. Amber, thank you very much for joining us for more insight uh, into the story. So first of all, for our viewers who haven't been following, can you tell us why did the Department of Defense want to award this contract to a single company? Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, well, so the initial approach and what the Defense Department's top officials have been saying from the get-go here is that they want a single provider for the cloud to avoid the complexity of dealing with multiple providers, multiple solutions. They're really pursuing a seamless solution where they can work with one vendor um, who can provide a kind of holistic approach to this foray into the cloud for the Defense Department. And Amber, how game-changing is it that Google dropped out of the race because of employees protesting? It's a pretty big deal. Um, it's something that we're watching very closely because, uh, you know, we want to see if this is going to be something that um, kind of gets traction and we see more of in the community. Um, in, in Washington and around the Beltway, we have kind of your um, usual suspects of government contractors who provide services and goods to the government. So this is not typical of a company like that. So since we're dealing with Silicon Valley companies, it's a little bit different of an animal. Um, so it's a pretty big deal, and it also significantly reduces the competition for uh, the Jedi Cloud contract. And speaking of uh, elements that aren't uh, typical in the story, Amber, uh, what about former Amazon lobbyists who worked in the department with Jim Mattis? That's also a concern for people following the story. It is a concern. You know, something that's been really interesting about following this story is there's been a lot of kind of tawdry details that have emerged over the case, over the, uh, the contract since it was announced uh, last early spring. Um, so we've heard a lot about the various uh, lobbyists who are former employees of high-ranking officials and high up at AWS now. Um, so it's been pretty interesting to see. Uh, I don't think that there's a lot there that's super concrete that you can point to that's going to say, oh, this is going to sway this one way or another. There are probably some people that might disagree with this, but um, I think those are people that probably have a stake in the contract or in the contracting process. Uh, so it's definitely been interesting to see. And of course, Amber, one other concern uh, for many who are looking at this is that maybe if all the information is on one centralized server, it could make it easier to hack. There is that concern. Um, if you're talking about AWS specifically, and we are since they are the front runner for this contract, uh, they've already been providing cloud services similar to, kind of similar to what the Defense Department is looking for. They've already been providing that for the intelligence community for several years now. Um, the CIA was the first to do this. So there's a lot of confidence in the security. Of course, everyone knows nothing is 100% secure. Um, but I think that security at this point is maybe not the chief concern right now. Now, Amber, if, you, uh, if I had to uh, rely on your information, your vast information in this story, and ask you to predict how this might play out in 2019, where do you think this is going? I've been asking a lot of my sources the same question. Um, so we are expected to get a contract award in the April timeframe. Um, we will see if that actually happens. We have uh, bid protests that are currently pending with the Government Accountability Office and with the U.S. federal courts, uh, which could tie up the process. Even if the contract is awarded in April, we can certainly expect to see more bid protests coming out, um, and that could definitely tie things up and not and get keep any work from being started on the contract. So. I'm not super confident that they'll actually start work on the contract. Um, definitely not in April when it's awarded. And I'm not really even sure if it will happen in 2019. Uh, but we'll, you know, we'll have to see what happens. I think a lot will ride on what the federal court has to say.